The loading screen is one of my favorite features of the AR app. In order to access it, you just click AR Books and Images. And once it's open, you'll see it starts checking for updates from the server that I'm hosting all the AR content from. And you'll notice there's a progress slider, there's a progress text that shows a percentage, and then it shows downloading updates and the total bytes and how many bytes you have downloaded already. And you'll notice that as it goes from zero to 100%, the progress slider, it'll start at red and it changes colors to green. So much action packed within this whole experience. Once it finishes downloading, then it's going to load the scene. Life goes up and it goes down. In this video, I will show you how to create a loading screen like I did for switching scenes in my AR app, Island Fever Augmented Reality with Unity Game Engine. And it's all about creating a loading screen to display information while assets load in the background. At the end of this video, you will understand how to build and implement a dynamic loading screen into your AR project. So how to make a loading screen in Unity? First, create a new canvas and name it loading screen, add a panel and name it background, resize it and change the color, add an image for any logo you want, add text, call it label text and resize it, add a slider, rename it progress bar, delete the handle, resize the slider, add text and call it progress text, create a new C sharp script called loading screen, open it in Visual Studio, Add the namespace for scene management and UI. Create three public references, game object for the loading screen, slider for the progress bar, and text for the progress text. Create a function for the scene loader. Create a coroutine with the same scene index. Create an operation variable. Set the loading screen to active. While the operation is not done, create a progress variable. Have the progress display text as a percentage and let the slider follow the same thing. Reference the coroutine in the method above. Save it and recompile. Add the script to the loading screen game object. Place all the game objects and the correct references in the inspector. Make the loading screen a prefab. Connect the prefab to a button with the right scene index. And voila, we have a button that uses the loading screen between scenes to show the progress. I was able to create this by understanding the purpose of a loading screen and then implementing it. And so when we're looking at the purpose of a loading screen, it's really to mediate the time that it takes to load assets and memory going from one scene to the next. And so without a loading screen, we start off with the main menu and then we select a button to go to a scene and essentially you're waiting for the scene to load all the assets into the memory. And that may take some time uh, and without an indicator of progress, users may grow impatient or they may think that the app froze. And so it's not too bad if you have two megabytes worth of content that you're loading into memory for the next scene. But if you have two gigabytes worth of content, then it could be heavy on the processor and it could actually take a while. And so that's where the loading screen comes in because you could have indicators, scrolling text that shows a percentage. You could have a slider that goes from uh, one end to the next to show the actual progress and percentage of, of it. So using the loading screen allows the app to take its time loading the next scene while also stimulating the user with an animated distraction. It sets an expectation that visually communicates the progress and also makes the loading process seem shorter, even if it doesn't actually do that. And it's all about the user experience and interactivity. And so any little thing that you could add to the experience to make it seem entertaining, you should do that, especially with the apps that you develop. Now time to apply what we learned with an activity. And we're going to design a loading screen that can load a new scene and communicate progress to the viewer. The key steps are creating a canvas with an image, background, text, and a slider. Create a new c -sharp script with a coroutine to control the loading screen. Make the screen a prefab. 
and then connect the loading screen to a button that you can control. And so give it a try and post a reply in the comments and let me know how it goes. And if you're not in a hurry, go ahead and follow along as I do this project in real time. And so we're back in Unity. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually just going to create a canvas. So we'll right click, create a canvas, and we'll call that loading screen. In that canvas, we're going to change it to scale with screen size, and we'll have that be 19 or 1080 by 1920. We just want it to match. And we'll also have it at 0.5, just like that. And then we'll also set the order to four. And the order to four just allows us to uh, make sure that this is going to be the topmost scene that shows up. After you do that, we'll add a panel. And that panel will go in, we'll call it background. And so we'll change the panel to black or we'll change it to white. And we'll set its opacity so that it covers everything. And then the rack transform, you just want to make sure it covers full screen. And then we'll go back onto the loading screen and we'll create an image. That image, we'll make it black and we'll resize it. And this can be for your logo, whatever logo that you decide to have for it. Then we'll add a text. We'll call this label text. And this text will resize. Lift it up. We'll call it loading. And we'll just resize it. Next, we'll add a slider. So UI slider. We'll resize it. We'll name it progress bar. Then we'll go inside the slider and we'll delete the handle slider area. And then the progress bar, we'll resize it. Then in the progress bar, we'll create and add a new text. We'll call this progress text. And we will just lower it down. We'll make it larger. Enter it. And we'll just make this 0%. Then our scripts folder. We'll right click and we'll create a new C sharp script. We'll call this loading screen. We'll open it in Visual Studio. And so we're going to add two namespaces. So the first namespace is going to be using Unity Engine dot scene management. And then using Unity Engine dot UI. So those are the two that we have. Then we're going to delete the update and start. We're going to add two public or three public references. So public game object, and we'll have that be loading screen. 
Then we have public slider, and that'll be progress bar. And then we have public text, that'll be progress text. Then we're going to make a function for a scene loader. So public void scene loader. An integer scene index. And we'll come back to that later. The next thing we need to do is create a coroutine. And so we're first going to just create I enumerator. I enumerator, then we just want to say loading screen. And we're going to use that same integer for the scene index. Then we're going to have an async operation and we're going to make a variable of that async operation called operation. And we're going to have that equal to scene manager dot load scene async. And then we're going to have it reference that scene index that we already have. And so then we're going to say loading screen. We're going to actually uh, reference that game object that we have for the loading screen that we created. And we're going to set it equal to true. And so while the loading screen is not done, so the exclamation point is not, means a not, and we're just referencing this operation is done. So while it is not done, because we have an async operation that's happening right now. And so while it's still loading all the assets, we want there to be a float and the float is going to be a progress. And what that is going to do is it's going to essentially convert the progress into an actual number that we can reference. So we'll have math F and we'll say clamp zero one. And then we'll say operation, which is the operation that we have, dot progress. And then what we need to do is we need to convert it to an actual number that we can use to reference for. And we'll just have that be divided by 9, divided by 0.9, like that. And so that turns it into a, a number that we can reference. And so then that number that we have will actually use that for our text. So we do progress text dot text equals the progress value that we get multiplied by a hundred F and then plus in parentheses percent. And so that says whatever progress we get is going to be a percent. And so now that same thing we want to do with the slider. So we want to reference the slider. So slider or progress bar dot value. Equals progress. And that's it. We don't need it to be a percentage. It could be a decimal and we'll actually change that in our our slider, make sure that's that. And afterwards, we have a yield return. And essentially, once it's done, it'll be null. And that's it. That's what we got. And so now, the last thing that we need to do is we just need to reference it in our method up here. And so we do that by saying start coroutine. Then we say load. screen loader right there and then within it we say scene index 
and voila, that is our script. So now we just save it, close it, wait for it to compile. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our scene manager and we're going to add our script to there, the loading screen. And so then we're going to add the loading screen to the reference there, progress bar to the slider, and then the progress text, just like that. And so after we do that, we'll go ahead and turn off the loading screen because we only want it to show once the script is active. And we're going to turn that into a prefab, just like that. And so now we're going to connect our button. So we're going to go to the ARC. We want to go to Scene Manager, add that to it, open up the function, loading screen script. I'm going to have Scene Loader, just like that. So once we're done, and that's what we got. So go ahead, implement this into your projects. Let me know how you like it and how I could iterate and improve on it. I appreciate all my Patreon supporters that have made this project possible and are continuing to support me. And again, if you want to get the project files for this project, go ahead and join my Patreon. And if you haven't already, go ahead and join the Discord because there's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool conversations, and that is the best place to reach out to me and help me build this wonderful creative and art tech community. If you like this and other videos, definitely join my Patreon to download the project files and get behind the scenes sneak peeks of new projects. And be a part of the sponsor section at the end of my videos. Download the Island Fever Augmented Reality app at islandfever.com or search for it on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Check out my courses on Skillshare, Gumroad, and Udemy. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button on YouTube and follow me on social media at Stuck on an Island or going to stuckonanisland.com. All the links in the description below.